no, not at this point. They got to see. And good morning. Welcome to Exiles TV. Glad to have you along with us on this Thursday morning. I'm Bill Perfita. He's Kevin Gallagher. I'm Kevin Gallagher, once again, somebody who's intimately acquainted with my schedule is calling. Calling me. you, yeah, right at right my phone. Is it? Is oh, it a, I'm sorry. Was I interrupting? Is it a number TV you recognize? Show? No, it's a trash call. Trash call. It's Heather from Account Services. Wants uh, to talk to me about the uh, warranty coverage on my car. <laughs> mm. Lots, <laughs> lots to talk about today. Um, I find this head headline just interesting as hell. The Louisiana Workforce Commission issues apology for erroneously sending out over 7,000 overpayment notices. Wow. Now, you know what that means, right? They said, oh, you're not eligible. Or they gave you the money, and then they said, we want it back because you weren't eligible. We overpaid you. Yeah, that's and what we it call turns, a clawback. <laughs> and, and as it turns out, they weren't right. Yeah. A, a state agency incorrect about something. Uh, can you imagine that? The horror. I'm shocked to hear shocked. The horror. Mm. But, oh, my God. And then we have our Metro Council here in Baton Rouge that has to have the debate and the hearing and the acrimony over the Alton Sterling lawsuit settlement one more time because... They're not having the meetings in council chambers, so the public policy, uh, public comment policy, still has to be followed, and people are allowed to email their comments in up to I think it's 12 hours before the meeting. And there was an email glitch. It went to spam. It, it went to spam, and the council administra of course administrator did. treasurer didn't see it. Of course it did. After the meeting, said here it is, and the parish attorney says, well. We got to go through it again. Now, are they just going to read that particular comment and then vote again? Or are they going to go through the whole shebang? See, I, I think what the law requires is that they read that comment and then vote again. Mm -hmm. If that comment changes. Is there only vote, one email in question? One. One? Yeah, they read all the other ones. Uh, so, but if they get into a debate, somebody needs to call point of order on this. Because basically, all they need is to read that, make the same motion that was made originally, see if it has a second, and vote again. If you get into all of this debate, I have a feeling that that will be out of order. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you also have council. Well, you'll, you've got members that'll want to re-debate the entire thing. Oh, of course they will, because it's their forum. They're on live television. And they can talk about how horribly this family is being treated, and if they were uh, a different color, they wouldn't be being treated That's this right. way. We're all and a bunch of racists. Yada 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 yada. On and on and on and on and on. None of that has anything to do, by the way, with the wrongful death settlement or amount or trial. None of that has anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. We went through it on this program, how you determine the dollars in a wrongful death. And it's things like future earnings, things like people who are dependent upon you and what age they are. But we need to factor in the feels, Bill. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, but they want to. Well, you know, in, in Louisiana, we, we one of the smart things that we did was we allowed for that, what's called the punitive damages, the feels, to go away. Now. Mm -hmm. I do think there are, there are cases when punitive damages, particularly medical malpractice, uh, that they should be allowed, but that's an opinion. That's not what the law or the procedure is. But oh my God, you want to talk about shoot yourself in the foot with this crap. Mm -hmm. Shoot yourself. Uh, Let's have all that acrimony again. Let's Some, somehow, when I saw the headline, though, and read the story, I was like, well, of course. Of course. We're going to have to revisit this. Well, and, 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 and the problem is that, you know, public comment policy should be they ought to have a phone line hooked to a recorder, and you get three minutes from the first beep to the second beep, because that's what you get mm -hmm. if you're at the council chambers and then and then play it or if you're silky slim you get into your first f bomb and, and then, then you get out yeah but, yeah may pro tem throws you out but the, see the problem with email is 
there are a lot of times that email gets misdirected, goes to a spam folder. Mm -hmm. Somebody clicks on it thinking they're opening it, and whoop, it disappears. Yep. I I'm sorry. Set up, let them have their public comment, and let them actually make the comment. You will have three minutes to make your comment from the time of the beep. The beep will be coming in 10 seconds. Beep! I think you all a bunch of poopoo -poo heads. You know, and, and, and you just let them do that for three minutes, yeah. and then at the end, so why do they have to accept email comment? Why? Why? Well, why because it's a public meeting, and you have to have you have to have public comment. Yeah, but you can you 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 should be able to you know the public comment can be made you know via a voicemail. We want to hear your voice. No, well, that you but, can come here and speak, or we'll play a recording of your voicemail. Yeah, it can, but that's how they set it up. See, because they don't have a meeting in the council chambers. Mm -hmm. The meeting is on Zoom. Oh, that's right. Everybody's yeah. zooming now. Everybody's zooming. We're all zooming now. All the cool kids are zooming. They can't get those. I mean, they sit six feet apart on that dais. They can't have the meeting in council chambers. Hey, listen, you haven't been to a council meeting, have you? Yeah, been several. I've been there. I think you ought to wear a hazmat suit 365 days a year. <laughs> Full body condom. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of like that. So they're going there. Okay. All right. As Scott Wilson said, uh, when Jen Rocca got elected the second time because they screwed up a procedural on the first time of her election, mm -hmm. as he said, it's getting to be a theme. Welcome to the circus. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just, these people don't think through this stuff. Because also, by the way, if I'm sitting on that council, and I do speak on the airport commission, I, I, seated, I, I'm, I have a seat on the airport commission, and we have a public comment policy, and you know what? I want to hear their voice. I want to hear their inflection. I want to hear if they're very upset or not so upset. I want to hear if they sound reasonable or unreasonable, and you don't get that with an email. Nope. So this is another good example of you let the tech people say, oh, this would be so cool. We'll just do emails, and I'll print them all out ahead of time. And oh, we, we could can do real-time texting. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear their damn comments. Uh -huh. So this is just, if this so were. So is it delayed till next month, or are they going to do it? No, they, they're they're going to do it next Wednesday I think night? It, it's next Wednesday, I think. All right. But, uh, but I mean, it's like, this is an example of FUBAR. Those of you who are in the military, you know what FUBAR means. Mm -hmm. It means fouled up beyond all recognition. Uh, yeah, well, good use of the F on that one. Yeah, but I mean, here's the deal. If you have a recording of their voice, you have a recording of their voice. There is no spam filter or trash box on voicemail. Mm -hmm. Set it up. You got all the recordings, you play them, and that way you can also hold them to their three minutes. There you go. And all you got to do is, you know, somewhere in that Zoom meeting, have Mr. Tech Guy press play. I just, I'm, I'm just tired of this idiocy that permeates our governmental entities from underlings. I'm pretty sure nobody on that council said, oh, let's do email. They said, how do we allow for a public comment policy? And then some nerd with a pocket protector said, oh, we can do it all on email, you know, all electronically. I want to hear the damn voice. That's what I want. I don't want to read an email. Well, especially when it's Silky Slim, because he's more fun that way. Oh, yeah, he is a lot He's more, more fun, fun to, to listen to than to, I, you know, I mean, he's just I like, I like some of the ones that are there every meeting. God love them. They're very civic-minded. Well, hello again, council members. I know that this isn't part of the debate, but I've noticed in Westminster they're making an awful lot of noise on Thursday mornings <laughs> when they pick up the recycling. <laughs> an awful lot. My dogs get upset. My dogs. I feel upset. sure that my neighbor's dogs get upset. And is there a way? that we can make these recycling bins, you know, like maybe we could pad them or something. Maybe line them, them with felt or something. To make them a little quieter. <laughs> now this is real, okay? And God love them, they're there at every council meeting. And you know what, if you record them, at least you have a couple light moments well, during your council meeting. You'd also get through only about 20% of the message for me. Beep, <laughs> in mid-sentence. This, this woman, I can see her. Uh, I, I have been, 
I've been to hundreds of council meetings uh, in my time, and I would say she was there at least half of the time. Mm -hmm. God love her. And then there's an older guy, and he gets up there, and he goes, um, uh, um, um. And Scott Wilson, the pro tem now, the former pro tem, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, your time has started. Go ahead. Uh, uh, well, I, um, uh, I, uh, uh, I take your time, but you need you need to tell us what you want to say. Uh, well, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah um, uh, in, in regard to the, um, I'm sorry, I, I should have written this down. Um, uh, every freaking meeting. Should have written it down. Yeah. Now, <laughs> for him, they should have one of those buzzers on a game show. Ah! Let's make it fun. This guy actually got something to say, or is he just lonely? Hell if I know. <laughs> I've, I've watched it. He will go through three minutes with Irm and Ah and say, oh, I should have written it down, but thank you. And then he'll, he'll, he'll go sit down. Wow. And that man went on to become the head of Visit BR. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're going to talk with the head of Visit BR. Uh, Paul Rigo is our guest this hour, and we're going to be talking with him in just a few minutes. Quick break. Exiles TV yeah, It returns. might be a break. I'm oh, not sure. Oh, by the way, for you lefties, in just a moment, Kevin's going to get wildly racist. So come back, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I should have written this down. and appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent with nationwide buying power. Kevin. And uh, coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to talk with uh, Paul Arrigo of Visit Baton Rouge. W what's it like to run a convention and visitors bureau when you're not allowed to do anything? Yeah, what's what's the tourism picture I mean, we're right now? We're not allowed to do a damn thing right now, so, you know, what, what do you do? Uh, a quick thing, and I, I tease this by jokingly saying I was going to be wildly racist, but what I mean is that for some people, if you criticize someone who of, of, of an ethnicity, that's racist, because you're not allowed to criticize people of certain ethnicity. Except the Dutch. Uh, the Dutch are all right. You can criticize the Go Dutch. Go after the Dutch all you want. Yeah. So uh, here we go. Two ins two recent incidents. Let's go here in Baton Rouge, and then we have one in Kenner in Jefferson Parish. Kenner? First of all, here in Baton Rouge, a man has been wanted for almost two years by the sheriff's office, was booked into prison. Fernando Mendez, age 20, wanted by the sheriff's office on a charge of first-degree rape. Eight-year-old girl. Jeez. Eight Jeez. years 
old. This guy doesn't need to be in jail. He needs to be under it. Okay? But at least he's off the street. Um, yesterday's headline was now, that... He hasn't has come to trial yet. He's he just been on no, the No, no, he's just finally been run. apprehended after nearly two years being wanted for this crime. In Jefferson Parish, three brothers under arrest. Now, ye yesterday's headline was that two under arrest, uh, third in the wind, but last night they caught number three. I am gonna, I'm going to guess that their names aren't Harpo, Zeppo, and Chico. They're the Perez brothers. Ah, now, well... I can't, I can't speak for Mr. Fernando Mendez uh, of his immigration status. Uh, he, may be, he may be illegal, you know, here legally, but the Perez brothers in Jefferson Parish not so much. Here's what they're accused of doing. Somehow or other, these three miscreants were left alone in a home with a 10-year-old girl and a 15-year-old girl. Okay? They started offering the 10-year-old girl money for sex. The 10-year-old? 10-year-old. Not the 15-year-old. She locked herself in the bathroom to escape them. They beat down the door and took turns raping the 10-year-old girl. They also raped her 15-year-old sister. Some of them, I'm sure, are nice people. Not those three. But these guys, it, 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 it's, it remains to be seen whether they'll face full justice in Jefferson Parish or ICE will deport them back to their country. Who picked them up? Huh? Who Jefferson, JPSO. JPSO? Sheriff's so? Office. All right. Well, I, I think ICE will let them hold them for trial but and then I am them. sick and tired of seeing stories like this, whether they involve an immigrant or not. It's like, what is up? with pedophilia in this country. It's, it's, it's sick and it's disgusting and it seems to be epidemic proportions. Well, you know, uh, you know you, this guy, you know, Fernando Mendez that you, you brought up, you know, uh, this is not his first rodeo. The eight-year-old was his third victim. There are two others. Mm -hmm. Over the course of years. Mm -hmm. Now, I have another question about both of these cases. Who left these children alone with these people? Oh my God. Who, you know, who left a 10 year old girl with three men in their late 20s to mid 30s? A 15 year old girl with three men in their late 20s to early 30s. Who does this? Well, you know, usually, now again, the, the original story is old, okay? Usually it's like, well, they worked with my husband, so, you know, they they volunteered. They said, "Oh, we don't have anything to do today. We'll watch the kids while oh, you go yeah. to the, we'll while you go to the racetrack or the casino." Yeah, you know, the racetrack or the casino. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I, 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 I'm guessing the woman didn't leave her kids with these three so she could go and sign up for her MIT alumni meeting. <laughs> Just guessing. Just guessing. And Just you're, guessing. You're probably closer to right than you know. She probably didn't leave them with these three guys so she could go substitute teach English literature at Bonnebelle High School. It's just, it's getting harder and harder and harder to find those good news stories out there. Or, you know, well, it, you know what? I, I, everybody says, oh, give me good news. The fact is, good, people doing what they're supposed to do, is not news. News by its very nature is about the things that aren't supposed to happen, but do. So, we shall see. And we shall see about this commercial break. We're going to take another quick one. When we return, Paul Arrigo from Visit Baton Rouge is our guest on Exiles TV. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats, taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. 
From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original cell vet. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Welcome back. Glad to have you along with us on Exiles TV. I'm Bill Perfetti. He's Kevin Gallagher, yeah. the, da the Dapper Man. In the center is Paul Arrigo. Uh, he is the president and CEO of Visit Baton Rouge, which is our, our visitors and convention bureau, our, our tourism agency. And, and Paul, I, uh, tourism all over this country has had a very difficult time. Boy, it's been... Uh, terrible since the middle of March and not not only here now in the summer some of the beach locations did uh, did much better than the resort uh, the uh, urban areas resorts did very well uh, one believe it or not Orange Beach did very well and of course they just went through this year until yesterday yeah yeah but uh, it's been a tough six months we have managed to uh, to do some uh, marketing with staycations and, and nearby drive-in market and and we did pretty good uh, last couple of weeks bill you can imagine that most of our time was spent on daily checking of availability with all the hotels to handle uh, first responders utility companies and uh, and evacuees so it's been uh, pretty challenging and certainly busy well i would guess that the hotels got a little bit of a much needed boost uh, with all the evacuees, first responders, utility That's companies, right. and things, I I, I heard that uh, uh, a week a week ago at this time, our our hotels were almost full. That's correct. That's correct. In and fact, that week we ran a 91 percent across the city, which is almost unheard of. And last week, uh, about 80. So there was some uh, holdovers from Laura, and maybe some early uh, people coming in for uh, for Sally, and. Um, uh, we don't know what to expect the next couple of weeks, but it looked like there was a little bit more travel occurring, and we get into some football, even though we've got uh, limited seating, we think there'll be a certain uh, uh, bump on, on football. Have you, uh, anybody put pen to paper and kind of taken a look at how much revenue has been lost from not having to have, not being able to have events? Yeah, we did, uh, we did that right after the, uh, the hit in, in April, it was something like $17 million that was events, conventions, what have you. Of course, conventions now are spreading out, they're distancing, they're um, limited to, I think, 250 persons per room. So we still have some meetings and conventions, uh, and we're still working on some, uh, some for the future. 
We're rescheduling some meetings right now for next year and, um, and pursuing some new business, some sporting events, what have you. The city has always been big on throwing a big party at the holidays. We have Christmas parades. We mm -hmm. have the uh, we have, we have the red stick revelry. On uh, are, are, is there any hope that we might be able to have any of that this year? I understand that red stick revelry is going to go on now. Whether it will occur with uh, with a live audience or not, I'm not sure. But my understanding is that the stick. Stick wheel drive, and it's always been fun, and it's something a city our size needed. It's a good party, and I think it was brought back maybe seven years ago now, and uh, and it's been a, a huge success. I can remember my friend Bill Profit and I were out there freezing our New Year's Eve. Goals. It, was, it was that one day when it was four degrees, and and the, and the sad thing about it. Um, was that at that time, uh, Johnny Walker Black was about $14 a shot down at the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, it's come down now. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was a great time. But, you know, this is what we were dealt, and it's not just Baton Rouge. It's the whole world that is sure. just going through this. I think we are surviving as well as any other community, certainly better than our friends down in New Orleans. They're, they're devastated. I mean, I, I thought LaToya pulled the, pulled the ripcord way too early and basically told everybody, stay away from New Orleans for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, her Visitors Convention Bureau president almost had a stroke. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody did that to you, thankfully. You didn't have the mayor saying... Don't come to Baton Rouge. No, but I had a stroke. But other than <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I think you know. I think more than anything else, there has to be dialogue between those agencies to discuss why, when, what have you. And we're fortunate enough to have the dialogue with the city on events and and what have you. You know, we we had the the big Marucci World Series was canceled this year. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking forward to having it next year. So we're looking at, at bringing some conferences, conventions here. Hopefully, you know, first quarter 2021 will be uh, more open than it is now. You know, I, I think we need to tell people that in Lafayette, they have big tourism bureau. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, Cajun French tourism mm -hmm. centers itself in Lafayette. In New Orleans, in Baton Rouge, you talk about a seventeen million dollar impact that you looked at in April, mm -hmm. and it's grown since mm -hmm. then. That's not to the bureau; that's to restaurants, hotels, Re retails, but, retails. And yeah. who, who all who all would have gotten that money? And, and, and you know, Bill, we look at things that twenty years ago didn't exist: um, Uber, um, Lyft. Uh, during the shutdown, the fact that these the, the, um, waiter and delivery of food to hotels when hotels would not or could not open restaurants. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it opened up a whole different um, aspect here. And people say, oh, we don't get any tourism here. Well, well you know, where do these people stay? Where do these four million people who come to Baton Rouge well, we don't get them in our restaurant. Well, what do they eat? They would eat potato chips all day. I mean, I think people don't realize the impact that it has on everyone. They're realizing it now. Well, I can tell you absolutely, no question about it. Paul LSU, um, normally a big tourism and money maker Boy. during the football season. Those home games are monstrous. Now, 25% capacity in Tiger Stadium. I can only imagine that during the home games, visitors aren't going aren't to come. Well, you know, we were really looking forward to this year. We thought Texas and Alabama, but the sleeper this year was going to be South Carolina because mm -hmm. they travel well and they travel so seldom. Yeah, they, they bring some money. And too. they bring some oh, money. Oh, yeah. But 25%, um, uh, it depends on how many people come in from uh, – the home, uh, the the visiting team, and also how many people from communities like Homa or Shreveport or what have you, mm -hmm. will it have the impact? No, uh, but I think it'll have a bump. I will know next week when we have the first first game on on Saturday. Uh, listen, it's a challenging year. This is what we're up against. We realized that back in my first board meeting in March, which was about a week and a half after this, we started to adjust our budget. We adjusted our budget to to pull advertising in. A, a local and, and regional uh, visitation. And like I said, the last couple of weeks we've been spent trying to find availability for first responders or what have you. So we adapted as best we could. And we're going to finish this year well. The, the thing I worry about is how much of this, because it had to be discontinued now 
is going to be gone for a very long time or maybe forever. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think when, when you start conventions that always used to like to come to Baton Rouge mm -hmm. or New Orleans and you say, no, we're canceling everything, mm -hmm. they're going to find another venue to have their convention. Right. And are they going to say, gee, I really, really kind of like it in, in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need to go back to Baton Rouge mm -hmm. or New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a very real danger. No, uh, no question about it. And more and more uh, competition and Zoom becoming part of a, a, a competition. Listen, this whole world has changed. We used to do very well on New Year's Eve with the, the drop and, and with Mardi Gras balls in the River Center, people mm -hmm. staying downtown. You know, Uber has changed that. You know, instead of staying downtown and, and avoiding the hazards, yeah, you, don't, the you, hazards, don't drive you, after you, you hop the Hooper. That's, right. we'll go That's right. So, I mean, this whole industry has has changed and and it's evolved and look i've been doing this 45 years and uh it is changing exponentially right now it truly is now how have the hotels have they had to adjust their their room rates and i guess we can't take now where fema is paying for evacuees and all that mm -hmm. we can't do it but have they had to make adjustments in the, in their Ab room rates absolutely they did and they uh, assumed more costs because yeah. now they have to clean the rooms and then you know, less people in restaurants really the hotels have handled it very well as the restaurants considering what they were dealt with um uh the the attractions i just got the a couple of lists of things. For instance, we've got the corn maze opening up there. They'll have a, a social distancing. We've got 13th gate. I mean, who are you going to hug in when you're scared to death in the 13th gate? Now, you, you're yeah, gonna how are they going to do that? They, they've, they're going to have a plan, I'm sure. And, and I, I think it's I have good. heard limited size tours going through. Mm -hmm. They limit the number of people actually in the attraction. Mm -hmm. And they used to be able to jump out and actually, you know, <gasps> but right. no physical contact I, whatsoever. I, I can tell you, though, it's uh, it's one of the, at, at one time, number one. Uh, I think it still is. It probably still one, is. The number one spook house attraction in the country. And God bless them, you know, and, and I think it's so cool that we have uh, something else that we're number one at. Mm -hmm. You know, we're number one that, we're number one in tailgating. I mean, do we even know if we're going to have traditional Halloween trick-or-treating in, in a month and a half. Uh, I, I, I think the mayor's probably going to wait as late as she can to pull the trigger on that one way or the other. And that's a Saturday. Yeah. That's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And is it a home game Saturday? It is uh, at Auburn. At Auburn. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it, this... Everybody's got masks. <laughs> might hey! As, might as well go trick-or-treat. What, what I worry so much about, though, is, you know, even with no tailgating, now, a great many of those people made their own food, but you had a lot of restaurants and catering businesses for the corporate tailgate, mm -hmm. you know, for X and, X and Y industries mm -hmm. and so-and-so healthcare. They, they were doing $5,000 worth of catering on that day. They're not getting that money now. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've probably cut their staff down to where they're barely hanging on. No and question about it. There is no, we underestimate how much money is being spread around by tourism Billy Nungesser said this at the very beginning, and I believe he is accurate, that tour tourism in the state of Louisiana is the largest dollar amount industry mm -hmm. in this state. And, you know, look who it employs. It employs the under underskilled, the skilled, the, the, the executives. And then you take, uh, just bringing it up to 2025, we'll have the bowlers back in town, okay? They're going to spend money at a restaurant, then they're going to leave a tip, and then the cocktail waitresses are going to go to the hairdresser and leave a tip, and all of a sudden the money just keeps turning over and turning around. Yeah. And it's new money. It's money come from somewhere else. And the other thing, visitors don't use services like a local would. We don't have to support them in schools. We don't have to have the fire department, the police department, God willing. And, and, and it's like new money that comes into the community. And I think Baton Rouge is starting to get the value. You know, we've always said, well, New Orleans tourism, Lafayette tourism. But I think Baton Rouge is starting to get the, the value of it, particularly now. We've got a break coming up. Uh, can you stay with us for yeah, one sure. more segment? I want to get a little more into the uh, the recovery for tourism, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask you to speak for yourself and kind of project for other people. Visiting with Paul Arrigo from Visit Baton Rouge. We'll be back in a moment on Exiles TV.
That's right. The Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We put the band back together. South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. the feeling. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with the Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. And we're back. It's Exiles TV. Thanks so much for being with us today. Bill Perfito over there. I'm Kevin Gallagher over here. And the man, man in the middle is Paul Arrigo. He is the head of uh, Visit Baton Rouge, the Convention and uh, Tourism uh, Bureau here in Baton Rouge. Paul, thanks for staying with well, us. My for pleasure. A while. Uh, let me ask you, uh, have you and a lot of others, have, have you had to actually furlough staff during all this? What we did, uh, Bill, we had some attrition, which uh, we had some folks leave uh, for other reasons, and that, those positions were not filled. We combined some of our departments, and uh, of course the information clerks and the part-time people that do uh, convention um, registration and information, mm -hmm. they, they were no, 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 no jobs, no, no working for them. We the people that met the, the steamboats that come in town. So uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, survive and continue to do what we're supposed to do as far as booking business and, and what have you. How does it look as you look at the future? Well, you know, some, at the very beginning, some of the conventions in 2020 were extending on to 2021. It looks as though some of them are now looking at 2022. You know, we're, we're hopeful 
that things will be more normal in the first quarter of 2021 as far as events, conventions, what have you. Um, international travel, I think, is going to be a longer time in coming back. Um, this is sort of like 9-11, you know, it's, it's bringing things close to the home, uh, for those of you who remember 9-11, which is almost 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, th I think the way everybody's doing business is going to change, uh, more, more shift to leisure travel at the appropriate time. You know, it, 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 you were mentioning in, in a segment, you have people from restaurants say, well, these tourists don't come to my restaurant. Well, that sounds like a personal problem mm -hmm. because I, uh, up until the middle of March, it would happen to Karen and I a couple times a month where we'd be in a restaurant and we'd hear somebody speaking German mm -hmm. or speaking French. I actually got into a conversation with a French couple because they wanted directions mm -hmm. on how to get to Abbeville, Louisiana and back to their hotel. Uh, and the international tourism here, and, and it wasn't like they were coming in groups of 70, but they were coming every Indiv single absolutely. day. Sure. Yep. And, you know, they call it holiday and they spend weeks in, in the U.S. And, and that was a good market for us. It's certainly good for New Orleans and, and certainly good for Lafayette. The individual regional person that comes from uh, Jackson, Mississippi or Shreveport or Little Rock or what have you, and includes uh, New Orleans sometimes as part of their tour, I think that's going to come back and probably in the early 20. 21. Uh, meetings, of course, always concern me because we've always done well with conferences. It's the way we, uh, we marketed ourselves because of our, uh, our infrastructure here with LSU and Southern and the ability to use those two uh, and community college, what have you, the ability to use those two, uh, three uh, entities as leverage. So uh, meetings are probably going to come back sometime in 21. Zoom has certainly changed things there with face-to-face -face contact. Yeah, I, I worry that Zoom is going to change things on an ongoing basis. But Well, like I said, I've been doing this 45 years. And five years ago, I looked at my telephone. I said, people come to conventions to learn, mm -hmm. to network, and for a trade show, to buy product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Learn, network, buy product. And that's where it is right there. Yeah. And unfortunately, our generation is much more into that face-to-face. -face and, and, and like my 25, 24-year-old daughter, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's all on, but on you the know, phone. There is a group that has some jingle in their pocket. And they simply like to travel. Mm -hmm. And I am hoping that we will be able to capitalize on a lot of these people that can't wait to get on an airplane to anywhere and can't wait to see the sights and can't wait to go eat in the restaurants and can't That's wait right. to stay in yeah. a hotel they've never stayed in before. God Absolutely. knows we worked for a guy who lived, he lived to travel. I mean, yeah. he loved to travel. Uh, absolutely. And I think, you know, as long as the travel and, and education and convention, whatever is tied together, I think. That's great. You know, I think it was maybe six, seven years ago when we had the airline issue and, and the government bailed out the airlines. Mm -hmm. Well, again, with this great idea, so instead of giving them money, we should have gone to every federal employee and say, here's, here's an airline ticket. And, and encourage that travel, and yeah. you know, and then, mm -hmm. and then travel includes hotels and includes food. And it, but, but, you know, I, I, think, I think there are ways that we can, we, can, we can do things and make things happen. Two recent headlines offer hope. One. I just saw this morning a drug that is in trial state right now that could help flush the virus from your body. Really? And the other is a vaccine that could be available mm -hmm. uh, on small scale basis uh, by end of October and by uh, and wide scale maybe by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. When you hear those, do you think, well, maybe there's hope for reopening in 2021? Because yeah. I think 2020 is the rest of the years of yeah, a write off. I, I think so. And, and again, you know, it's, fall is normally the time for us when we have festivals and events. And, and like we said, Halloween big here, Halloween parade and, and the haunted houses and what have you, New Year's Eve. So I think, I think you know, it's going to be tough the remainder of the year. Hopefully it'll come back first quarter of 21. Louisiana Restaurant Association, Stan Harris. Yeah. Uh, you were probably at the Rotary Club when he made his address mm -hmm. last Wednesday. And he is estimating that about 50% of the restaurants in New Orleans will not reopen. Mm. And many of these are the big name. This is like Katrina. Yeah, the, the big name legacy restaurants. Mm -hmm. See, after Katrina, they couldn't wait to get reopened. Mm -hmm. The big name legacies. Mm -hmm. I think that I think it, it 
that we have gotten during this to say, well, you know what? I don't need that anymore. And, and I'm worried because we have a lot of great restaurants here in Baton Rouge where we get a lot of foreign money. Mm -hmm. You know, people from out of town want to go and eat. And I'll, you know, call out the names. They want to go to Jubin's. They want to go to Mansour's on the Boulevard. You know, they, they want to go to the original Ruth Chris franchise. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, do we have to rebuild that segment of interest? And is that going to be you and Steve Perry, and I forget the guy's name in, in Lafayette, that are going to have to do it? Yeah, I, I think, I think it, it's got a lot to do with what, what we need to do. And, and again, that's something to our um, efforts, particularly the first three months of this last six months, was to engage the public back with the local restaurants. We sort of got out of that bringing business into town and got more into making the local uh, entities survive. You know, you mentioned some of these restaurants, and, and, and everyone that you mentioned, with the exception of Ruth Chris, uh, is uh, an independent company. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, another one, Louisiana Lanyap, well known. Uh, Mike Anderson's, we can rattle them all off. Homer's uh, House Restaurant, uh, we wonderful can, restaurant. Exactly. They don't have the resources that the big chains have. They do not. You know, they don't have the resources where TGI Tuesdays would come on and do the advertising and do the, you know, the whole marketing. And then here's the local guy that's got a tough tough time trying to trying to support. Get the word out on Facebook. Well, yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's the whole thing. My, my, nephew, my nephew came in from Dallas. Uh, he was presenting something to a Department of Public Safety. He's mm -hmm. an electronics guy. And he said, I'm only here for one night and I want to eat. I want to take you and Aunt Karen out a, a, to a, a, a local mm -hmm. restaurant that you think is a star. Mm -hmm. And he was staying in the corporate boulevard and so we took him to City Pork. Mm -hmm. You know, local guy. We know Stephen. Mm -hmm. We know his people. We've been going there for years. Mm -hmm. But he, coming from Dallas, would have never known that restaurant existed. Mm -hmm if he didn't have somebody here. And it is a big hill. Yeah, and, and you, you hit the nail on the head with that. Local people. We really, every time I'm on TV, radio, and, and you guys have been very, very generous and given us the opportunity, I encourage Baton Rouge people to invite out-of-town friends and family to Baton Rouge once they're here, giving them the experience that they really would enjoy. Like right, right up by your house, you've got... Um, Roberto's. Fr uh, Roberto's. You we got ate Fra there two weeks ago. French French market. French market uh, bistro. bistro. Uh, Rufino's. That's right. That's you right. Know? And you've got those right there by you and um, and uh, where I'm at, you got Louisiana Lanyap and and. Um, well, and we've got the. They're not 300 seats, but they're great local restaurants that are a little more casual, like uh, Bistro Barones. That's right. And bin 77. Mm -hmm. And the new... Uh, uh, I've seen you there on occasion. I've been there. Let me tell you what. You know, but all of these are local people... That's right. ...that really do reinvest a lot in the local community. And I don't mind taking a visitor to any of these people because it's guaranteed it's going to be a success with the food, with the service, and also with the way they treat visitors. Mm -hmm. You're not yep. going to get that at your TGI Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. Right. Paul, random question. Um, if in, say, early next year they do sound the all clear and say, you know, the governor finally says there is no next phase. The next phase is get about your lives. Is there any thought of maybe having a big welcome back, you know, festival and inviting people to come to Baton Rouge for a big yeah, blowout? You know, I kind of wish it would have been for New Year's this year, and I was kind of wanting to do a parade and invite the first responders. My daughter's a nurse in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Those kind of folks to be, you know, honored. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I would like to have something like that. Um, God, I, it, I'd like to do a funeral, a, a funeral, a, a parade for COVID and get rid of it. But yeah, the, yeah. a lot of people would take well, offense to that. So. Yeah. Jazz funeral, man, How COVID dare you? Yeah, you know, but it, sort of like we did in New Orleans for King Tut when King Tut finally left in 1978. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it's time, you know, when it happens, it's going to happen. And I think we're going to all get out. Here. Well, and, and we know that God willing, when it does happen, you're going to be out front. And hopefully we'll be there to help you a little bit. I, you certainly will. And uh, yeah, if you, when you go through these times, it seems like it's dragged on. But you know, it was a year ago that we were playing football. 
Yeah. A year ago that we started our championship uh, game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we were actually in Texas a year ago uh, this week. So uh, this too will pass and, and we'll move on. 2020 is, it, it could be summed up by the very bad joke. Guy walks into a bar in New Orleans and he says, I need, um, what is it? I need uh, a Corona and two hurricanes. Uh, and he got it. The bartender says, that'll be 2020. 2020. Paul Arrigo, visit Baton Rouge. Thanks so much for being with us. More to the top of the hour with Exile TV in just a moment. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Nothing could ever bring me down. Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down. Taste the Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugge, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugge Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Clarence Bud Show. Yeah, I'm back on the air. That's right, 10 a.m. until 12 noon, Monday and Wednesday, and we replay it Monday and Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. to midnight. Check us out online. You can watch it live at pelicansportstv.com, or better yet, why don't you just download the Pelican Broadcasting app? That way you can take it with you anywhere you go. That's right, the Clarence Bud Show. Tell you what, oh, wait, gotta run, gotta go. Bye. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Back, Exiles TV round two will be coming up in a few minutes. We got about uh, six minutes in 2019 18 you know, seconds uh, to, to round this out. I don't know <clears throat> if you get depressed at the state of things with this COVID 19 lockdown and the, the governor's orders, which seem to be sometimes inconsistent and, and, and sometimes unfair. Uh, but there's a lot of depression going around, a lot of people are upset. Uh, there's this recall the governor uh, uh, movement I, I, going on. I think on. that's just precious. Well, it, I, it's the same thing as a, as a libertarian winning a major it's, office. You it's know, precious. I mean, there's, it, it's got very little chance of success. I mean, there were no less than four attempts but to recall But all they're doing Bobby is making Jindal. themselves unhappy by, by doing See, you asked me if I get depressed. And I have actually had this, this, the real cardiac depression that a lot of male get af, males get after they have. Mm -hmm open heart surgery and fortunately it hasn't happened much but I know what depression is but here is what bothers me and it kind of makes me sad I don't know if you call it depressed is we have a large portion of our society 
that is just looking to be angry at somebody. Oh, yeah. Looking to be unhappy. Much more so since COVID-19. Want to believe everybody's trying to take advantage of them. Everything's a lie. And they want to argue, and everything's a lie. And, And that makes me very, very sad because you know what? You don't have to be angry. You don't have to be sad. Things are what they are, and things always change. And uh, uh, somebody last night that I was talking to, and it was talking about, well, I don't like phase three because it isn't really truly phase three. I said, well, what is your impression of what phase three should be? And he said, well, I, I, I'm not sure. It shouldn't be this. It could be that. I said, I, I said, I think the closing bars at 10 o'clock is stupid. I really do. I agree but 100%. I said, Here's the deal. You're all worked up over it. When was the last time you were in a bar after 10 o'clock? And he said, oh, it's been years. I said, yeah. I said, so it doesn't affect you to the point where it should make you angry. And you have no control over this. I said, look, I said, here's the deal. You're a good guy. You have a lovely home. You're 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 a good engineer. You make a decent amount of money. But you don't have the mega cheese and the influence and the standing and the contacts to be a major player in any of this. So sit back. Why let it bother you? Why look for reasons to be angry? Why think the entire world is out to screw you? See, I can't do that. I have a very happy life because I don't do that. And and I have friends, people that I care about dearly, that are walking around just looking for a reason to be mad. And that makes me very sad because you still have to live your life during all of this. Well, there, Bill, there is an argument to be made for empathy. You know, I mean, you know, certainly, yes, my days of hanging out in bars late at night are largely over, but can I not have empathy for people who would like to? Well, you can, but now, you what about all of our friends who would like to make a living playing music in those bars? Now, that's for some a different thing. For some reason, John Bell says, well, the bars can open until That's a different o'clock. thing. But no music, no music. But see, so, you're, getting, you're getting angry about it, and that's not the right emotion. It's, it's, it's angry out of feelings for other, you know. But see, uh, that, that's bad. That's bad for you. That's bad for society. It's empathy bad is for, bad. No, getting angry about it. Getting angry, getting all worked up, and getting ready to toss invective and raise your voice. It's not going to accomplish a damn thing, first of all. No, I get my the blood last pressure person, back up. The last person who gets listened to, by the way, is the one who raises his voice. Mm-hmm and doesn't have anything concrete to back it with, just the fact that they feel bad for their friends. Okay, Uh, now you just said words. Anything concrete. Here's part of the problem with phase three. The governor doesn't have anything concrete on which to hang this. All right, but he's the one who gets to make that decision, not you, not me. Yeah. And so you can be all angry about that, or you can say, look, I'm going to go home tonight, and I'm going to I'm going to cook rigatoni, and I'm going to open a nice bottle of wine, and I'm going to be a and happy the hell person. with everybody else. I am not going to sit there and let my guts get all roiled up over something that I can't completely understand and that I don't control. Well, and I, you know, it, it may be there are things that we don't know. There may be things that have been explained by somebody who has a lot more credibility than me. But the fact is, everybody walking around to get looking for reason to be angry Mm -hmm. is a malignancy in this country, not just in Baton Rouge, not just in Louisiana, in this country. And look at those morons in the streets that know less about civil rights and Black Lives Matter than they do about rocket science. Mm -hmm. But they're walking around looking for a reason to be angry and protest. They are the useful idiots that were spoken of by Marx and Stalin and people like that. But the thing is, a lot of us everyday people, people of good heart, fall into that trap way too easily. You know what people says, let me tell you about this. I said, I prefer you didn't. Why? Because chances are I'm going to think you really don't know what you're talking about and all it does is make me angry. You know, the, the late Mike Wolf, who used to do afternoons at WJBO, Mike was no rocket scientist, but Mike knew how to separate the wheat from the chaff. And people would call up and say, yeah, there's such and such at this clinic, and they were doing this to this and then And he said, were you there? No. Did you see it? No. Well, then how have you come by this information? Well, a friend of mine's sister was there, and she said this, and Mike said, don't care to hear it. Not reliable. I only want to know about what you know to be a fact, not what you think, not what you feel, not what somebody told you. And you know what? We're all being patsies, letting people tell us who we should be mad at 
and how we should be mad and how long we should stay mad and what we should do about it. Well, and you're right about that. Regardless of what side of the political fence you're standing on, that's right. we're all being played. And it cuts both ways. We're all being and, played. And you no, know, I, I get saddened for the people I care about, but I don't get depressed over this anymore. My life is more valuable than that to me. Hour two of Exiles TV coming up in moments. Stay by. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. Your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hello. Hola. Ni hao. Experience what the Baton Rouge International School can offer your children. Now welcoming displaced students for short and long-term stability. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Perfita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hello, ah. our two ah. of Exiles uh, TV. Uh, a little later in this hour, we're going to have something very, very interesting. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we have beautiful architecture and historic buildings all around our city. We certainly do. We also have infrastructure that needs looking after. Yes. And we have some beautiful old buildings that either need to be rebuilt and restored, or sadly, maybe they yeah. need to come down. Well, and, you know, there's a mayoral election, in case you haven't heard. <laughs> and, and a lot of interest groups have mayor's forums. Um, there is a group of architects, both physical building architects and landscape ar architects, mm -hmm. and designers that have a group. They are having a forum to which they invited the mayoral candidates. And I said, well, I wonder how many are coming. Every mayoral candidate is coming except for this gentleman, Fred Smith, which means right now they probably got the biggest attendance at their mayoral forum, yeah. and they're going to talk, ask the mayoral candidates, you know, everybody's going to ask about crime, and ask them, what are you going to do about preserving our city? What are you going to do about zoning and architecture? You know, what are you going to do about fixing our infrastructure? These are all good questions. Well, and they're, and they're questions that average voters like me when I hear it, I go, yeah, nobody ever asks them about that. One of the things that's bothered me for a long time about Baton Rouge, and I love this city. I moved here in 1991, and I've really gotten to where I, I, I don't think I ever want to live anywhere else. I mm -hmm. really love it in, in Baton Rouge. But we have let whole areas of our city just go to seed. They've and, deteriorated. And in some of them, like... So, several blocks near Interstate 110 downtown, adjacent to the downtown area, there are some marvelous old buildings, and the upkeep is horrible. 
Well, I mean, even even not downtown. I mean, we all know the buildings that you know were built like in. 18, 14, or 15 that have the beautiful front porch and, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. We know those, but, I mean, the Cotton's Wholesome Building on Plank Road, mm -hmm. a big industrial building that was a beauty when it was built in the 50s, mm -hmm. has been left to go to seed. The old Borden uh, Dairy on, on uh, Florida, Florida Boulevard. Boulevard. That was, it, it looked... The ceiling's it, caving in. It looked the, the like a beautiful colonial farm, remember? Yep. But now you drive by and it's still standing, but like the roof is caving in. It's like, take it down. So, uh, you know, to the point, uh, Fritz Embaugh, who is a member of this group and who is also an AIA architect, and we've had him on before to talk about what's going to happen with the library, you know, what, what, what would an inspector and architect say about that. But he's going to come and tell you all about their forum, and I'm guessing the public will be invited. Uh, I'm sure the designers and architects and landscape architects are going to have a lot of questions of their own, but... It is unique in that this is the first one that I've heard of that has a full house. You have some of the three candidates come or four candidates come. This is a full house. For Even for those of you who maybe don't live in Baton Rouge, but you've maybe come spent some time here for LSU games, etc. It broke my heart over the years to see so many of those beautiful, beautiful homes along Nicholson. I mean, some of those were just architectural gems. They were beautiful oh, homes. Yeah. And they're gone. Yeah, and and it's could we not have done something and repurposed those homes to some you know to some other purpose and and saved them because it's it, it's just to me it's so sad some of these were absolute mansions and they've just been bulldozed. Well, the uh, the Dave Gleason house uh, actually had a a separate entrance for each of the seven bedrooms in the house, mm -hmm. and it wasn't because it was fire code. Well before, uh, well before Dave Gleason bought that house, mm -hmm. it was a um, a rather high they end. Did, they did a little business there. It was a rather high end uh, entertainment venue for males. Did, did, did a little business there. Did a little business there. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was it was historic because of its architecture and remember its brick structure. It mixed about nine different kinds of brick, mm -hmm. and it was just a, a a cool old building. But I mean, I remember when I first moved here. The Capitol House Hotel was still in operation across the street. The Heidelberg was not. Mm -hmm. And they had the, a great bar and a really great restaurant, and then it sat. It went to seed and went to seed. And then finally, some people, I, I believe uh, Cam Morton was the moving force behind this. Mm -hmm. He put his money up and got other people to restore and rebuild that. And that hotel, we've done uh, broadcasting. That is a magnificent hotel. Mm -hmm. Now, but it took 20 years before somebody had the impetus to not let that thing just sit and deteriorate. Yeah, I, it, that was one that uh, the Heidelberg made me very sad that it was just sitting there mm -hmm. going to rot. And it's really kind of unbelievable now when you look at the condition because it's, it, it's, it's a vibrant structure. I mean, the only thing holding it back right now is COVID-19. Yeah. I mean, we've attended conferences there. Or we've attended, you know, uh, large-scale meetings. Uh, big, big events for nonprofits. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I've been to many private parties there. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a great place. And, you know, someday the, Marianne and I might like to do a staycation, try and get a Riverview room and mm -hmm. go down there and just enjoy it. But uh, we have wonderful architecture, and we mustn't turn our back on it. Well, and I think we also need to have somebody who is a mayor, and it wouldn't hurt to have a lot of council people as well, that have a vision for growth that fits the mood and the feel. You know, uh, we had no zoning commission for the first 15 years I lived in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. You could build a 150-seat restaurant and only have six parking spaces in your lot. I can think of one in particular. Exactly. Very, very busy restaurant. Where the hell do you park your car? Exactly. You park and your car at the furniture store next door. Yeah. And so, you know, what, what you've got is you have a need to have a vision. As we have revitalized downtown Baton Rouge, that's terrific. But let's say somebody wants to put up another tall building in downtown, which I wouldn't object to. But it's going to become part of our skyline. Are they going to want certain architectural standards met before they issue the permit? Mm -hmm. These are all good questions. 
Let's take a quick break, and we'll re-examine that coming back on the other side, and we're going to talk with a professional architect later this hour as Exiles TV continues. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the Exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. We thought we just thought we'd country it down a little bit. Say hi to your mama and them. Hey, speaking of country, did you watch any of the uh, American country music, country music America music? No. I, I've lost track of how many damn country music awards there are now. Oh, there's there's like, so many of there's them. There's like 50. Yeah. And uh, But last night, one of our good friends and our former colleagues, uh, James Gilmore, he was steady tweeting and Facebook and, you know, keeping us up to date. And I'm like, James, I don't recognize any of these names and I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie Underwood, I recognize. Carrie Underwood, which kind of amazed me. So isn't she considered an old hag in the world of country music? No, now? no, no. She's still a darling. See, that's but, the thing that when I was a country music DJ, did you ever DJ on a country oh, station? Oh, hell no. Uh, I, I, I worked at um, 100.7 here in Baton Rouge, and I also put in several years uh, back in the earlier part of my career at the legendary WNOEFM in New Orleans. Oh, God. Located in the heart of the historic French Quarter. But I, yeah, I got pretty familiar with country music. And way back then, in the, in the late 1980s, my impression of country music is they're fickle. And I don't know if it's the fans or if it's the, the movers and the shakers behind the scenes. They mm -hmm. just get, you know, you get one, maybe two albums, if you will, which an album technically is a collection of things, whether it's a collection of photos or a collection of songs. So an album is an album, whether it's vinyl or whether it's CD or whether you download it, it's still an album. But 
these artists that get maybe two or three really major releases and then they're done. Their label's done with them. Well, yeah, they, they, they've gotten into Flavor of the Week a lot, uh, uh, and, and a lot of the crossover people don't like the traditional country people. I mean, I remember when uh, uh, Brad Paisley was on the S list for a long time because he wasn't traditional country, and he was getting too much airplay. Brad Paisley oh, is that considered yeah, they, traditional country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of those, you know, uh, rhinestone studded, you know, big belt buckle people, they didn't like Brad Paisley at all. Uh, but you know it, it's um, it's interesting. They do have too many award shows in country music. Way too many. There should be one. But, Every genre should get its one. But you know they they are also the only genre in music that promotes itself over radio and mass media. When Karen was running Radiothon for Children's Miracle Network all over the world. She used to try to find highly rated country stations. You know why? The stars had relationships with those stations and they would come or they would call or they'd give you something to auction. The country DJs were used to tugging at your heart streams, strings and they would do the thing where they would make the appeals and they would make them count. Uh, Karen even got invited to Nashville. If I may throw this in, in my opinion too, Country music fans are much more responsive. Oh, they are. When you ask fans to come, when you ask fans to show up, do something, contribute, help out, they do. And they're very generous. Uh, but Karen got invited to uh, Sony Records Nashville operation. They were rolling out a few stars, and they thought that they might be useful to Children's Miracle Network, so they invited Karen and Ken Boson, who was a consultant uh, to Children's Miracle Network, who was a big-time country programmer. And... She got introduced to all these people that, you know, eventually went on, like Steve Holy and some of these others, that gave their all for Children's Miracle Network and have been hit makers all the time. They, they get it. Every other music genre, you know, is like, you got a program director says, don't talk about this sick kid. You know, you, you got to play three more hit songs in this hour. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they were nowhere near as good. Of the $55 million she used to raise annually, through radio, I, I would say that 40 million of it came from country stations, country music, and country artists. Mm -hmm. right? I just, when I first got into radio, I couldn't stand that music. It was just, you know, it was your cheating heart. And, you know, if you spun the record backwards on the turntable, you got your job back, your wife back, your house back. You know, it, it was, it, I, it was mind numbingly awful. At that point in my life, I would have listened to Chanka Chank Cajun music through headphones for 25 hours rather than play one Furlan Husky song in the studio. But on the other hand, it's pure, it's mostly decent, it's mostly family friendly, and it's America. And it's fueled by bourbon when they write it. It's America. You can tell. Hot nights, cold beer, oh. hanging out in my pickup truck. And it's like, <laughs> oh my God, this stuff. It used to I have a I have an affinity for country. I, just, I have fond memories of country radio. I would picture the audience in my mind, and it weren't pretty. See, I, I uh, it were not of pretty. All, of all the radio, the types of radio stations I've worked at, I did enjoy country the most. Be, I enjoyed country music when it was time to meet the listeners. Uh -huh. You know, now talk radio has been great when I when we were in talk radio, but sometimes meeting your listeners, the people that wake up and listen to you every morning, when you meet them face to face, it's like, I got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> yeah, Dykes, well, where country people usually it's kind of, it's kind of are like, just happy to it's see. It's kind of like the feed we spread in the barnyard, though. I mean, you, you know, it, it's, you know, the, the chickens are going to peck at it if you throw it out you there. You remember some of those super regular listeners we had oh, God, on, yeah. on 107.3. Mm -hmm. It's like, can you meet them at a station event? And they're like up in your face. Oh, lo loved them all. Whereas, yeah, you know, a country country music, they, they want to get up in your face just so they can hug you. Yeah, uh, but I, now I like new country. And there are a lot of country people, including our buddy James, who would dislike my saying that. I do like, I like Brad K Paisley. I Brad's like, not new. Brad's been around for 20 but years. he's considered new country. Because he's he's probably the the most pure of any of them. But it's as not far as it's not all steel guitar and boot scooting, you know. Uh, it, it, the lyrics are very pedantic on the old country. I, I mean, it's like 
I, I like you know I like the new country. I like Carrie Underwood. Uh, uh, I like it when um, uh, what's her name, biggest star, biggest female star on the pop charts now. When she does country, uh, blonde girl, um, Dude. me, Taylor Swift. I like it when she does something country. She hasn't done anything country in years. Yeah, but they, they still play it, and that's the nice thing about country stations is they don't only play what just got dropped today. They go back and they play things over the last five, yeah, six years. Yeah, Taylor Swift, back when she was nice. Yeah, back when she was nice. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, but I mean, I just, they have so, they have, all right, they have the Academy of Country Music Awards. That was one last night, right? Mm -hmm. There's the CMAs, there's the ACMs. There's the ACMs, <laughs> the CMAs, the Country Music Awards, the Academy. They have their own version of the Grammys. And I think it's called the Boogers or something like that. Oh, it's the Grannies, actually. Yeah. It's the, the Granny Awards. The, the Grand Knees. <laughs> and they have like five or six. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, I guess they're filling network television time and they're getting the advertisers. Uh, yeah, apparently. Uh, now, what it would have been interesting to see is how do they do an award show in the age of COVID? Well, they did it virtually. Everybody was in their own place. Keith Urban. Ah, here I am on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. I sure do. Thank y'all. I think Keith Urban was in the in the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, I'm and everybody else is so done with Zoom. That, you know what? Zoom. Uh, there are a lot of people, even business. Well, I don't people. have a problem with Zoom itself. I'm just. It, it's every TV commercial, every show, everything. Look, there's Fox News, a show that normally has a panel of five people in the same studio. Mm -hmm. They can't do it. Yeah, and you know, probably half of those people are sitting 15 feet apart. Could with be a, with a camera on on them individually. Well, and you'd have to do that anyway if you're keeping them apart. You you know to get your camera shots right. But I mean, I just back to the award shows, way too frequent. Yep. And does anybody really care? Well, yeah, like guys like James Gilmore do. You know, I think the real fans do. The real, I mean, the real purists, well, the fans all, that really love the genre, love all the music. They're all upset now because it was a tie, by the way, for Country Music Entertainer of the Year. There should never be a tie. Oh, that's what they're all saying. They're screaming, they're I yelling. I agree, there should never be a tie. Pick they, one. They are yelling, they are screaming, they want a recount, they're going to march in the streets. I miss Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All-American Cup. Leanne Rimes. See, I like, I like Leanne Rimes. I like Trisha Yearwood. Well, she was a kinky little rascal, though. Oh, yeah. But boy, what a voice. Good God. I can't listen to How Do I Live Without You without tearing up. Leanne Rimes? Yeah. Because, see, I always preferred the Trisha Yearwood version. Now listen to that one, too. Trisha Yearwood sang the, the version that was part of the soundtrack Con of Air. Con Air. Yeah. And I, I, I always thought Trisha Yearwood did a much better job. And those both versions went on to become numer numerous radio montages for sick kids. <laughs> we used to play them back to back. Oh my God! And and here's Trisha. All right, here's Leanne. I'm in Children's Hospital, Little Rock now. Let me tell you Justin's story. And here the music would come. Yep. <laughs> and there wouldn't be a dry eye in the house. We've we've produced some of those for like dreams come true. So you you would you, you I'll gotta, tell you what. The music sets the mood, my friend. Country people will give you the emotion. The yep. DJs, the the artists. I I, I have my guard See, that's what guitar it is. That's, because of that's uh, what it, you just that. said. It. Country yeah. music gives you the emotion. They give you it's the emotion. Music that feels and it makes you feel. And well, you can't ignore it. Yep. I, I I will give it that. All but right. oh, when I first got in. They did ask me to go to work for the old WYNK, and I had to turn Page Do down. I said, I don't know anything about the how music. You, how did and you do the? You don't turn Page Do down. I turned him down. Wow. Yikes. And, and he was very gracious about it because he came at me three different times. Uh, but it was all that Ferlin, Farron, uh, Felix, Fuba, you know, uh, and women with giant hair and 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 too much makeup and they all sang Tammy Swine Net and all that kind of crap. Low red I wasn't gonna play that because I didn't want to hear it in my own headphones. <laughs> as as I as I said one day, you know, if if my headphones, if the only thing they could get, you know, wasn't on this station, even I wouldn't listen to it. Real quick before we go to break, you just reminded me, I used to work at WNOE with a guy that he was a great country DJ, but he hated <laughs> the music. And so he'd put on his headphones, he'd say his thing, and then, you know, go to the record, take the headphones off, and turn those studio monitors down. And he had a timer, and he was watching the timer so he'd know when the song was over. That'll hurt you. I mean, nice. it's like it's like listening to Cajun music. It will oh actually lower your IQ All right, we're gonna by one point 
per song. We're way overdue for a break, so we're going to take that right now. And uh, uh, architect Fritz Embaugh is our guest. We're going to talk with him in moments on Exiles TV. <laughs> Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with the Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr. And I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time, I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Clarence Bud Show. Yeah. I'm back on the air. That's right, 10 a.m. until 12 noon, Monday and Wednesday, and we replay it Monday and Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. to midnight. Check us out online. You can watch it live at pelicansportstv.com, or better yet, why don't you just download the Pelican Broadcasting app? That way you can take it with you anywhere you go. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show. Tell you what. Oh, wait, got to run. Got to go. Bye. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original cell vet. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Exiles TV, glad to have you along with us. This is the point at which I remind you uh, that if you loved it so much and you want to see it again, you can watch it at 10 o'clock tonight on this very same channel. Uh, and uh, if you have some folks that you think might enjoy it and uh, they were otherwise occupied uh, during these two hours, uh, please remind them. It will also be up on YouTube on the Pelican Broadcasting Channel uh, probably in about three or four hours. And you can always get the app it's very easy uh, for those who have Apple devices. It's in the App Store under Pelican Broadcasting. Right, and, and so, you can watch the programs live in real time on any device from anywhere. Yeah, so please do avail yourself of all the options, those that fit you best. 
Okay, somewhat serious topic here. I mean, it, it is a serious topic. We've got a mayoral election coming up, and there's a, a lot of things at stake for the future of our city. But one thing I don't think a lot of people are thinking about or discussing is, what do you want your city to look like? What do you what you know? What do you want it to? You know, do you want it to be a beautiful city, or do you want it to look like some parts of the city already look? And that's why we're going to talk about architecture and maybe pinning some of these candidates down on how yeah, they feel. Archi architecture, design, all these things. Everybody talks to mayoral candidates about education, which they have nothing to do with. Right. But they do have a lot to do with how the city looks, with the zoning board, the architectural control committee. Uh, uh, places, uh, people like that that are under the purview of the mayor joining us now, uh, Fritz Embaugh. Fritz is an AIA certified architect. He practices. He's an architect and builder here in Baton Rouge. But you've got a group that you're representing today. Tell us about the group, first of all. I, I do. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, good morning. Uh, I'm with the American Institute of Architects. I'm actually the current board chapter for, for, for Baton Rouge this year. And um, four years ago, we assembled a similar forum um, in conjunction with a few other design-related uh, professional affiliations here in town. We've got the uh, American Society of Civil Engineers, we've got the uh, American Society of Landscape Architecture, and we also got the uh, Louisiana Engineering Society that's partnering with us to bring the candidates together uh, this time in advance of the upcoming election to, to ask them, again, relevant questions related to um, quality of place, our environment, um, governing principles related to planning and permitting and zoning. Um, as well as, as other things that are, that are impacted by drainage and sometimes even traffic. Uh, they're all design-related issues that we, we, we live, eat, and breathe every day of our lives and, and that the, uh, uh, the next mayor will have a, a, a significant impact on the direction that he or she brings to those, those issues. Well, as Bill said, these are issues that, you know, I, I can't recall in any mayoral election before people asking these kinds of questions. Yeah. We again, we, we had a, a smaller forum last time around. Um, it was kind of the first time that we, as an organization, said, "Hey, we should do something about this." And so it was it was no questions asked this time around. And so we put the uh, the request out to all the candidates. Um, everybody responded, and, and just about everybody is going to be there uh, in attendance. Uh, we'll have five candidates that are in attendance, and uh, we, we've got uh, an hour that we'll be addressing these these questions with them. We've got a some questions that we're vetting right now that we think are very relevant to our community but also to our profession. How does this organization, which basically <clears throat> incorporates, incorporates all the art and the science of place, mm -hmm. how do you feel we're doing in East Baton Rouge Parish now? Where's our starting point? Are we doing fairly well? Are we doing not so well? Uh, are we all over the place? Yeah, what, 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 yeah. what are your thoughts? I, I think that that's a, it's a bit of a loaded question, but, but I, I welcome it. It's my uh, job. <laughs> there's a, exactly. There is, um, you know, I do think we're a little all over the place in a lot of ways, um, but there's a lot of different things that we touch base with, especially with the engine, you know, the, uh, the different societies that we're bringing to the table. We've got architects that typically handle a lot of the vertical architecture. We have the engineers that tend to be a little bit more in, on, on planning, master planning, but even other elements of vertical architecture. And then we got landscape architects that tend to be a little bit more on the, the environmental green side of what we do, green space. Mm -hmm. And so all of these come together in very different, different aspects. And so if you ask somebody today about traffic, for instance, uh, I'll say, you know, somebody may say that we're making improvements, but we still got a long way to go. Um, that even if you look at the backlog from DOTD, we've got potentially decades worth of work there that we need to address. I'm looking at this image <clears throat> behind us, and we have the state capitol here. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the, the state buildings that have been built in more recent years kind of took some architectural cues yes. from the capitol building and created sort of a cohesive look to the state facilities. That's right. Is, is that needed for the entire downtown area? Um, I don't know that... that, that Not that everything looked like the capitol, but there be some that's right. Some continuity or some you know, exactly. There, there are there are um, building standards that are implemented across various regions for things like that. Um, I tend to be personally one that's against that because I like an architect to be able to bring their individual freedom or, or sense of expression into the fold to to do that. If if we had something like that, then we may not have had something like the Shaw Center, which was voted one of the most Excellent influential mm -hmm. and beautiful buildings in the world when it was put in place. Mm -hmm. Um, LSU does have a very similar standard, but they've opened it up in some recent years to allow for some more individual expression. And sometimes that can go very different directions. 
And so, um, but I do believe that that's, that's, that's really what an architect brings to the table. It's, it's our job to interpret what our clients' needs are, their wishes are, um, understand that, match that up against budgets, expectations, and, and, and deliver what is, at the end of the day, hopefully a very successful and, and cohesive and beautiful project at the end of the day. You know, if, if, if it were a council member forum mm -hmm. and the person running for the seat where I live would ask us and, we'd say, and they'd say, I want to see more cops in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I want my trash picked up before 4.30 in the evening. You know, it's printed right there, put it out before 5.30 a.m. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of thing. Are you anticipating that you or members of your forum are going to look at these people and say, hey, look, a lot of people in this community don't understand what planning and zoning is doing with their time and you have to do better. Yeah, yeah. In, in <clears throat> so crime is a question that came up several times in our, our original questions mm -hmm. and um, those are things that we're not going to address because they're just not related like we don't have impact but when you start talking about planning and zoning there are decisions or there are um, uh, directions that we can take with our our larger planning document that could potentially work to um, prevent crime um, or even provide a sense of place or sense of security uh, quality of place that can actually help to reduce crime in a lot of ways and as you know that we we don't have a current active full-time planning director frank duke stepped down that's right we, do we have an interim there's a lot of great staff at the planning commission over there that i think is doing a great job um, but they started a lot of they started a lot of really good work when frank came in but they're not quite finished with that and so i think those next steps the 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 next mayor can be very influential in how that unfolds who do we bring in? What's their focus? And where do they take that? How do they finish that document out? So, yeah. Where do you stand on preservation of some of the structures that we we have some beautiful places? We do. Especially adjacent to downtown. Um, but they seem to be going to seed. Should these older structures be saved and, and kept as part of the face of, of, of the city? Yeah. And again, there's a question that you'll never probably get the same two answers from two different people. So if you if you got a preservationist you're talking to, um, the, the every absolutely every old structure that's older Yeah, I'm sure older Fairly than, Cook would tell me something different. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Every you know every structure that may be older than 40 years might be very, you know, uh, uh, they may be very passionate about. If you've got a developer that's very financial driven, they may give you a very different answer. Take it um, down, put something else, that's something right, new up. That's right, that's right. So I think there's, there's really got to be a balance, though, between those two things. We can't just eliminate our history for the sake of progress moving forward, but we can't hold on to it forever um, just for the sake of something being old either. If it really, so you, we got to really look at that. Is is there something there that really is offering a a value to our community because of the history that it offers? Mm -hmm. Is it substantial enough that 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 um, we can really make use of it moving into the maybe next adaptable version of it moving into the future with it? Um, and then the, the finances work. There are some, everything comes down to money at the end of the There place. are some yeah. people that say, and I'm not so sure whether I buy into it or not, but there are some people that say uh, that the mayor's office has too much influence on the architect, engineer, and contractor selection committee, where if you are bidding on any of the governmental work, mm -hmm. Before you're even allowed to bid, you have to go to the Architect, Engineering, and Contractors Control Committee. And a lot of what you see in the skyline is governmental. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the building is governmental. A lot of the traffic restructuring is governmental. Uh, does your group have an opinion on whether or not there might be too much control uh, in, in the executive department? Yeah, no, that's a great question. There's, um, there's the mayor's office and the Metro Council actually do work together, mm -hmm. sometimes harmoniously, sometimes, sometimes at odds, not. as we know that. Um, um, and, and I'm interested to see how this, this kind of election will unfold because there are several current or former members of the Metro Council that are, that are in the running for the mm -hmm. mayor. And so, but to answer your question, the, uh, the selection process, um, our organization from the architectural role as well as the engineers organization for the engineering selection role um, are frequently brought in to kind of consult on that process. And so um, there is a board, a panel that's assembled. They usually serve a term and uh, they, they, they're comprised of different uh, members across our community. Some of them are from the mayor's office. Some of them are architects, 
that or have not like no interest in the work or mm-hmm. completely no conflict of interest for performing in the work. And then I believe there's other members that are um, um, from affiliated aspects of, of, of our profession. And so I think the process itself is a fair process, but, but sometimes there are guidelines with which how that work kind of needs to be adhered to completely that just may, may be a little gray sometimes that people just don't quite understand. Well, there was it. a time a number of years ago uh, when an awful lot of the work that, that got recommended by that board was by some of the largest architectural and engineering firms in the world that had yeah. offices here. Yeah. And there were people that found that to be somewhat suspicious because they were also the ones that were underwriting things that the mayor's office did in the downtown development district or sponsoring Fest for All. Mm-hmm. And they also used to write giant campaign contributions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always thought that their work was flawless, but there were some people that didn't like that. Yeah. Are you telling me now it's changed that, that those people will not be on the architecture and engineering selection board if they have any interest in the work or if they're politically involved? Yeah, my, um, again, I've not served on the city selection process. I have done it through the school board and I have done it at the state level. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the rules are very similar for all of those, those boards and those selection processes that if for you to serve on that committee or that board and that panel, you cannot um, participate, uh, benefit, or, or, or generate any sort of involvement in those projects at all. And, and even for a period thereafter that you've served on that board, you have to remain inactive from, from uh, going after those projects. So. We're going to continue uh, after this break with architect Fritz Embaugh. They've got a mayoral forum, uh, forum coming up with designers, architects, engineers, uh, where they're going to question the candidates about what they're going to do for the city, what their platform may hold for the way we live. We'll be back in a moment. And that, that's- Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Sometimes life is wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. 
If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. And we're back with Exiles TV. Bill Profita over yonder. I'm Kevin Gallagher. And the man in the middle is Fritz Embaugh, professional architect. We're talking about uh, a forum coming up where they're going to ask candidates for mayor about some of these questions, questions of architecture, design, and, you know, is it important that we get good answers from these people? It's important to me how our city looks going forward. Fritz, I was wondering, I, I see you brought some material with you. Do you mind sharing any of the sample questions? I did. For the candidates? I mean, is it... I, I, some of them might be watching. We're telegraphing a punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did, and, and unfortunately, I can't give you the specific questions, but I can tell you, again, the nature of the project, the questions that we got. We're dealing with economic, uh, the economy, the economic developments of, of what we deal with from a design standpoint. We're dealing with questions pertaining to the quality of place, mm -hmm. uh, permitting, drainage, government operations as it relates to, to what we do. Um, and so we don't have the, the, the final questions vetted out yet. We're intending on doing that today. Okay. But uh, but we don't want to we don't want to release anything. Get any, everybody to to advance. All right. You play those cards up. close you know, to the vest. Suffice it to do, say, man. though, it's it's all an integrated construct, particularly if you are doing a larger style project. You know, you you've got to have the traffic flow. Yeah. Uh, That's you, you've also got to have now a way to slow. Rainwater and wastewater in your open spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've got to have something that can be built under budget, That's something right. that is aesthetically pleasing. It, it, uh, it it's not as easy as most people think. It, it's not. It's all intimately tied to uh, kind of a circle of life in the building world. So you you want to attract the work in. You want to you want to be able to encourage people to develop things. So you got to put you got to put incentives in place that want people to invest in your community. But then you have to, you have to be able to um, make it simple, make it easy, and not cost burdensome or cost prohibitive for them to then take those steps necessary to further that investment. The permitting process should be efficient. Um, the the impact fees uh, in the area should be negligent or or not overburdening. Um, and, and and then the other requirements to go along with that. From, from an environmental standpoint, from a, from a drainage. Uh, we've got to pay attention to those things so that as, as we're developing those things in our area, they don't negatively impact other infrastructure or other properties mm -hmm. that just create more problems that we're kicking down the road to have to deal with. So. I, I've, I've heard from a friend uh, who is a project manager in another city, uh, and it's a very large size city, that the biggest problem they have is the permitting process being very slow mm -hmm. uh, and, and that sometimes they will feel they need to interject their design aesthetic into a project and it can be rather onerous do we is that a universal problem do we have that kind of problem in baton rouge i don't see it my experience anyways has been not so much from the the permit review process trying to interject their design philosophies into it um, it's more of how do you interpret code and so the, the code, for the most part, is very clearly and well documented. But then you start getting into professionals, um, some areas where it's gray. You, know, you just can't address everything in a book for every feasible um, scenario that may exist. Well, and, and so they, you get into the aspect of interpreting that code and how it applies to those things that fall outside a little bit of the, the gray line. Well, and, and I'm kind of curious. Uh, are you working when it comes to these things and i'm you i mean an architect mm -hmm. it might be you an engineer that's right it might be you a landscape architect uh are you working with a peer when you get into these discussions uh in it, you know it 
talking about interpreting the code. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at, there's, there's a rule book on doing heart surgery. But the guy behind the mask with the knife in his hand is the one who interprets yeah. the rule book. That's right. It, it's, not, it's not somebody in an administrative office on the fourth floor. Mm -hmm. So when this happens, as we look at quality of place, is there in place someone who is a reasonable peer that understands what an architect is doing or a civil engineer or a landscape architect or is it some bureaucratic appointee or elected official? Yeah. So um, there, are, there are many different um, jurisdictional authorities that will have to go through depending upon the project. Mm -hmm. It may be the city in the permitting authority there, mm -hmm. maybe the state fire marshal, maybe the health department, maybe even some cases DOTD, depending upon the nature of the projects. And there's a few others that would even get in place. So for the purposes of what we're talking about at the city level, it really kind of focuses, um, the, the, the Department of Health has city city offices mm -hmm. that work with them at that level, but then also the, uh, the permitting and review officials. Typically, in most cases, um, they'll have they, what they deem a professional plan reviewer in place. In some cases, they are architects or engineers that are doing that. But a lot of times they're more of a plan review or a professional that has been trained to to understand and, and then they have to go through continuing education, my understanding as well also, to understand um, you know, how to interpret the plans, how to interpret the code, how to connect those dots, and how to efficiently move it to the next step. One of the things that's been, I think, a very positive aspect of um, uh, the last several years in the permit office, they've begun to outsource some of the, uh, the the reviewing authorities to third party entities. Those guys, I believe, oftentimes have professional architects on their staff that do have a little bit deeper understanding or engineers um, with how they interpret the, the code, review the plans, and push things forward. Are there any projects or, or project uh, that is like in the pipeline that could be uh, threatened or encouraged, mm -hmm. uh, depending on who goes in as mayor or, uh, the, or the future yeah. makeup of the Metro Council? Um, I guess there's possibility of that happening. Typically, the way the permit process works, even it would be the same way as like if we adopt a new code. Mm -hmm. So every three years, a new code is typically adopted, and we have to change our ways that we respond to that. So if your project has already been permit, permitted, reviewed, and is under construction, you've got your review you know, letters back, they're approved, you're ready to pull your permit, then you've, you're safe. Okay, you're you're out of the you're out of the you know the weeds at that point in time. Okay. However, if you've not submitted for that permit yet, um, I suppose there could be a an issue there that you may be at risk of having somebody change the game on you, change the rules. All right now, because uh, I have something unrelated, I want to ask you about. But the forum is happening this Friday, right? Tomorrow at uh, yeah, the doors open at eleven o'clock. Questions start at eleven thirty. And, and the public uh, is, is probably going to have very little room on this. It's mostly going to be panelists and media. COVID-19, yeah. I imagine. That's right. That's right. We've got a small group that, that uh, from the professional affiliations that we've discussed earlier, that they will have some membership and attendance. Um, we do have some media that will be present. And so um, it's not open to the public, but we will be somehow, you know, find a way to broadcast this uh, after the fact to the public. So after the fact, you can have it available on demand. Correct. And that's if, the if you'll tell us, we'll tell the public uh, in our next broadcast which is well in advance of the restaurant, uh, uh, re restaurant, the, the election. I'm hungry, can you tell? Time. Yeah. That's right. Uh, that they can look at, at, at what you all uncovered. I, I wanted to shift gears. Uh, I was told that last week that you and your wife, who is also degreed as an architect, she is. Uh, that you all volunteered to go to Lake Charles and do vi building in inspections. And you're the first person we've seen who has some actual knowledge that we've got in person. So. What's it like there? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's it's not good. It's not good. Um, uh, so I was part of a group of individuals that got certified over the last couple of years, mostly architects, engineers, um, and building professionals. And I think there's some contractors also that took a very specialized um, um, educational program and testing. It's called a safety assessment protocol. It was mm. produced by Cal the state of California years ago mostly in response to the earthquakes and, and snares that they're dealing with, to have a kind of a rapid response team in place, if necessary, to help facilitate rebuilding on a quick level. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was a small group of us that went out last week 
Um, and, and we worked hand in hand with the state fire marshal because they were coordinating a lot of those efforts at the, at the state level from the government and GOSEP to, to evaluate structures. Could they, be, could they be occupied? But more importantly at this point in time, how quickly and where could they get power back up and running on the grid as quickly as possible? But then also we were just producing wellness checks. As we know, there are people that just didn't leave. Mm -hmm. they, they elected to stay. And, and sometimes in certain cir circumstances, they may want to stick around still or they may change their mind and want to get out. So we were asking people that we came across if they wanted to stick around or if they were ready to leave. And if so, we, we were working to facilitate a way out for them. Did, uh, you know, the thing that was all over TV was, was the big, it used to be the Calcasieu Marine Tower, and then it became the Capital, Capital One, One Tower. Tower. Mm -hmm. And we were watching that, uh, that glass sheeting being peeled off. Did yeah. anybody go in that building to see what it was like? We were not. I mean, I'm sure somebody had. Um, and and the, um, the EOC that we were working out of the, uh, uh, while I was there uh, was not far from that. So you could just look over the, some of the trailers that were set up, and you could see it in the distance, uh, very close distance. We were downtown. But um, most of the areas that we were working on were in uh, larger, larger housing projects, like housing developments, uh, multifamily-type structures, mm -hmm. where we knew that there were probably people, people still occupying these areas. Um, and they were... Um, just outside of downtown area. So, um, but but again, when you start looking at the level of devastation in this area, it, it was it was really substantial. Are significant. there people continuing to live in buildings there, that are not structurally safe? There are. There are. There's one one housing development in particular. Um, it's about a five building, two 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 floor, uh, you know, apartment development, and we came across. I think. Not a many, but but probably five or six families or individuals that continue to stay there. Um, substantial damage to this to these structures across the board. E even forget the condition of the structures, just the the environment around them, because of the amount of debris and and uh, jeopardizing conditions around them with the structures that were all over the place uh, was was pretty pretty hazardous. They they elected to stay there for whatever yeah. reason. Is the uh, we, we're down to two minutes here? Sure. I, is is it appropriate for all the people involved to do some sort of an estimate of how long it might take before it gets to where it was? Uh, it, it seems the devastation was pretty substantial. It was. It was. Um, just from what I've seen in terms of um, the utility supply from a water and electrical standpoint, it, it could be a while before they really get things back on board. Mm. But but even for reconstruction, a lot of those areas, I'm sure there are some people that are presently working on that to try and figure that out, um, maybe in their own areas. But but I would think it would, like the closest I can reckon it, you know, um, align it with is what we went through with Gustav. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Gustav hit Baton Rouge pretty hard. It did. Um, but I would say this is easily three to four times what, what we experienced in Baton Rouge for Gustav. Oof, that's, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you went and uh, uh, and I'm glad you're able to give us kind of your firsthand yeah, sure. view of, of what was happening. All right, this forum is happening uh, on tomorrow. Uh, we will find out when it's going to be available for you online so that you can see it again. Professionals in design, architecture, engineering. Uh, uh, urban forestry, things like that, going to be talking to the mayoral candidates saying, what's your plan? You know, too many people ask about crime and education. This is something that we all have to live with. So when we find out more, we will get that information to you. Fritz, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. For the, for the rest of you, we thank you for being with us again. Uh, you can get it online anytime with the Pelican Broadcasting app. It is in your app store, and it's up on YouTube probably in about two and a half, three hours. Uh, until we see you again on Tuesday, a reminder, we have a, a Morning Exiles Facebook Live broadcast tomorrow morning, and then we'll be back with you on Tuesday. And until that time, please take care and stay safe. God bless.